welcome back to my channel, welcome back to you, and welcome back to me. I've been gone for a week. I did pre-film videos, so you guys did see videos last week, but it was like me from two weeks ago, not me last week. So I took a week off, so today is just going to be like a chill video because I feel so like noodly, like a worm. I don't know, I just feel like weird, like wow, I'm doing this again. So naturally I forgot how to film videos and I forgot how to brush my hair. So now since we're in the holiday season, people are starting to think about, you know, their New Year's resolution already and wanting to get back into shape. And you know, the holidays are centered around food, so I think people start worrying about their weight more and, you know, trying to get healthier. Okay, so first I want to talk about counting calories because a lot of you guys know that I did start my whole fitness journey where all these videos came from were from counting calories. So there's two pros to it, or three if you want to count the third pro is it works. But the two pros that, what I really liked about it, and I do think that it's appealing to a lot of people and why they like this diet is because one, simple to understand. It's not like one of these diets where it's like, okay, you do this on this day and this on that day. Like it's very simple to understand. And I'm going to explain it to you right now. The whole science behind calorie counting is if the calories you eat in a day are lower than the calories you burn, you're going to lose weight and vice versa. If the calories you eat in a day are more than the calories you burn, you're going to gain weight or you can gain weight. So right there, that was very simple to me when I first started out losing weight. And you know, before I started doing that, I was overeating. So when I started keeping track of my calories, I was making smaller portions for myself and I was feeling full longer. So even though I was eating less than when I was overeating, I felt just as full. And that was because I was just reducing my portions. The second thing that I want to say, and I also consider this a pro, is that you can talk to your doctor about this. You know, using your BMI, which is your body mass index, your doctor can help you come up with an appropriate amount of calories that you should eat in a day to lose weight. So not to maintain, but to lose weight if that is something that you need to do. So. You know, that's something else that I really liked. It was something that I feel everyone can talk to their doctor about. It wasn't something like new, like something like, oh, this is a diet and they never heard of it or something. I don't know. It was something that's been around for a while. Now I want to talk about the cons to counting calories. One, it does become kind of a hassle to keep track of all of your calories. I know that there's apps to use, but I was old school and I wrote it down just because I held myself more accountable, you know, and I would put it in my planner. I would also keep a whole food diary and, you know, make a whole log out of it. Like, you know, I felt full longer eating this food or, you know, something like that. So that definitely is the downside is you have to, in order for this to work, you do have to keep track of your calories. You can't just, you know, keep track of it all day and then go out with your friends for like dinner or something and then be like, oh, that doesn't matter. And then wonder why you're, it's not working you do have to keep track of everything. So right there, that's a downside. The second con that kind of was an issue for me, and I'm not saying it would be an issue for you, but I know a few other friends that kind of did the same thing, and that's you try to fit these foods that are not good for you into your diet because you can, because they are low calorie, and you say, well, it fits into my calories. I can eat a half a brownie. Say you knew exactly that a brownie was 60 calories, and you're like, all right, I can eat half of it, and that's fine for my diet. Technically, but not really, because they are low calorie, but they're not necessarily good for you and they're just empty calories. And basically what an empty calorie is, it's just food that provides no nutrition or very little nutrition. It's like eating a piece of paper. Yeah, it's gonna be something in your stomach, but that does nothing for you. So, you know, I, I was starting to do that, you know, with like 100 calorie pack snacks, and I was like, oh, they're only 90 calories. You know, that fits into my diet. But really, that was not helping me and it's got to go somewhere. It's got to store somewhere. So you might not be getting the results you want when you look at yourself, but the number is dropping on the scale. So that was a little bit tricky for me because I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm losing weight, but I'm not looking much different. And that's because I was eating foods that weren't good for me, but because they were low calorie, I was like, oh, I want to eat that and I want that in my diet. So I see that as a con just because I know when people start getting into counting calories, you start getting bored, you start craving sweets, and you know you might start eating things that aren't necessarily good for you but they they're low calorie so that's why i don't just look at calories anymore if you're eating outright garbage and it's you know low calorie or it fits into your calories you could lose muscle instead of fat and that's when you start seeing the number drop on the scale which is another reason why i don't weigh myself because to me the number on the scale doesn't matter what matters is the way i look and feel so you know you could start losing muscle and you don't get healthier losing muscle so you know, you can see the scale number go down every week or every two weeks or every month, but 
you don't look much different. And the reason being is because you still have to eat good quality food instead of empty calories. The thing with counting calories is you do need to use common sense. You know, you need to say, I need to eat healthier. I need to eat things that provide protein, vitamins, minerals. I've never been on an extremely low carb diet like the Atkins diet or something like that, but I have reduced carbs out of my diet, so I do know a little bit about this subject, but it's very similar to what I was saying in the calorie restriction diet and where you can mess that up, is you can reduce your calories by eating lower in carbs, but you could overdo it on fat. So an example would be like butter. Butter is low in carbs, but you don't wanna be eating sticks of butter. Cool Whip is low in carbs, and yeah, that might be a good replacement for dessert, but you don't wanna overdo it. So that's another example of ways to kind of cheat the system. So I just wanted to briefly speak about that. Okay, so now I wanna talk about what I'm doing now, and when I say I eat lower in carbs, what I mean by that, what I adopted from the calorie restriction diet, and just basically my whole diet now, and that's I still eat carbs, I have good carbs, carbs that don't have a lot of sugars in them, but I still eat portion controlled meals, so smaller meals throughout the day, like I did on the calorie restriction diet. Because if you're doing that diet, what you wanna do to feel full the longest is to eat throughout the day, not just eat one big meal and then eat again at dinner. You're gonna feel hungry because you can only have a certain amount of calories in a day. So something that I adopted from the calorie restriction diet is you know, spacing out my meals, planning my meals, and eating them throughout the day. Things that I adopted from a low carb diet is bread, cutting it out of my diet just completely. There was no reason for me to have bread in my diet, so I just cut it out during the week. I cut out granola bars, I cut out rice cakes, I cut out 100 calorie pack snacks. If I want those things, I can have them on the weekend. So really where I'm at now is, you know, I do watch my carbs. I take calories into consideration. It sounds complicated, but I just eat food that I know will be good for me. You know what I'm saying? I try not to overdo it with carbs. I try not to overdo it with calories. I try not to overdo it with sugar. I just eat foods that I know can provide me with nutrition, you know, minerals, vitamins, protein. So what do I eat on my diet now is I have yogurt and oatmeal. I have fish and chicken. I have a wide range of vegetables. I have a wide range of fruits. And I'm really trying to stay away from things like pasta, bread, um, any little snacks that come in a package, stuff like that. You know, I do have protein shakes once in a while when I can't wake up and make breakfast for myself. I have eggs, I have a little bit of cheese, not too much. And, you know, I just really try to stay away from fried and processed food. So I hope that this video helped. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section down below, and I will see you guys soon. Bye!